Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Yeah, I'm breaking them down to bite-sized pieces today. Pretty good stuff. First up, Bitcoin confiscated from the PLUS token, which is a big Ponzi scam, was likely sold by China and is not being hoarded in the treasury. This has pretty big ramifications and it kind of explains a lot of what has been going on with the price action also. Stella has been going crazy and this could be part of the reason. It awakens with a 100% price surge after two protocol upgrades. Also more China news, the BSN or the National Blockchain Service Network provider adds one more project to its list and that is Polkadot. And finally, Cardano's Gogan era inching closer. We're going to take a look at what that all means and what is also going on with the next two developments. So we'll go over all that, but let's quickly take a look at what's going in the market. Today is uh, Saturday, November 28th. It's 9 a.m. A uh, pretty cloudy, rainy day here in Houston. But uh, here's what we got and what is going on. So Bitcoin, a little bit of a surge. I like to see this, 17.4. It's up 4% but down 6% for the week. I mean, we've seen some uh, pretty big swings lately, uh, almost $3,000 in a 24 hour time frame, And that's nothing to sneeze at, but it uh, looks like we may be on the road up, but uh, I am still a little bearish in this uh, position. I think there's uh, still a bit more of uh, losses to have, but you know, who knows? Uh, Ethereum 529, I like that. XRP is up massively again, 88% uh, over seven days, 16% for the 24 hour. Tether's in fourth place, still at 19 billion, but here's an interesting thing. Cardano is now in the fifth position. Look at this, Cardano was down around eight, nine, sometimes 11. And uh, Polkadot was up around here, Bitcoin Cash were dropping position. Chainlink was usually number five, but Cardano has overtaken that position, not by much. Uh, we're looking at a 5 billion, 5.2 billion market cap to 5.1 billion market cap. But Chainlink is, I mean, excuse me, Cardano is on a huge tear. And when we go over this uh, this story, which is the last one, which really is probably one of the bigger ones, uh, you're gonna understand why this is all happening. Also, Stellar at 143% for the week, 13% for the 24 hour. Also, let's take a look at this, instead of in uh, USD, but also in Bitcoin. So we can compare everything against the dollar, but the dollar is pretty weak. Uh, we take a look at that, Ethereum about 0.4, XRP 11, 100% for seven days as far as in relation to Bitcoin. Cardano's still up massive, everything's up. I mean, let's just be honest, but 160% for Stellar, get out of here, it's crazy. 3.4 for Monero, 8% for NEM. What, what, you know, we should be asking is what's down right now? I mean, we took such a huge dip. I mean, how could a how could anything be losing? Well, Huobi token, but what are you gonna do? Zcash, 3.4 up, that's good. 3.8, nothing really fantastic. All right, let's jump into today's top stories. So first up, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin that was confiscated from the plus token scam was sold by China. So everybody had been reporting about this, about the plus token. It was a huge scam, just a Ponzi scheme. They would take money from the new people coming in and pay the old people. And then it would just keep going around and around. It was a billion dollar scam, multi-billion dollar scam. And uh, they finally got caught, but uh, damage is done. And of course, uh, China was in the middle of this. And it was able to confiscate a whole ton of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And everybody thought that what they were going to do was just hold it and put in their treasury. And then they would dominate the world scene. But as it appears here, that's not the case. They don't really care that much. They want cash and they want to keep things liquid. So I, I know we had talked about yesterday about Brad Garlinghouse being on uh, Anthony Pompliano's podcast. And they were going back and forth about the Chinese uh, mining pools versus the my, the individual miners. And there was a big debate, but it, it doesn't really matter. What it really matters is, is public perception. And Brad Garlinghouse is doing a fantastic job of rattling the cages, pounding the desk and going, you know what? Uh, we got to really control the situation because China is taking over Bitcoin. That could be a national security issue. And if you if you step back and look at, you know, like 3D chess type thing, you're like, it's a great move. It's brilliant. And there's actually an article over at BTC Manager, which talks about the U.S. intelligence asks the SEC to support Bitcoin and crypto companies. And the reason because... Uh, they're looking at national security issues, which is one of the questions I actually uh, brought up yesterday. Well, could this be a national security issue? And it looks like um, people are taking the bait. So whether that be the actual plan or not, it's uh, it's still a great move. It's, it's a great move for crypto. And we'll see if it all pans out. But in all honesty, if you, take, if you peel back the layers, China's not like they really want it. They're like, we want some cash. So what happened here? So Chinese crypto journalist Colin Wu and a few other experts believe that Bitcoin and Ethereum confiscated by the Chinese government from the plus token scam 
has been converted to fiat and put to the central bank of China. Colin Wu shared screenshots of official documents about the confiscation of extremely large amounts of Bitcoin uh, from the Plus Token scam, biggest Ponzi in history, crypto history. Anyhow, it was 190,000 Bitcoin and 830,000 ETH. That's a ton of crypto, which cost over $3 billion. And wow, it was $3 billion just for Bitcoin and $423 billion for Ethereum. Wow. And says that according to the document, the Chinese government sold that crypto and put the funds to the central treasury managed by the People's Bank of China. So it says here the official announcement seems to indicate the government has sold it and returned the central treasury managed by the central bank. So the big question would be, well, China likes to put out official announcements, which are totally fake. So I know that there's a lot of activity in the Twitterverse and they're talking about tracking these different transactions uh, through different wallets. So we will see if this holds true. But if it does, was it what it says to me is that if China had all this crypto, then they had to liquidate it and they did it through uh, through Huobi and OKX. And if they did that, that would play a big thing. A little piece in the market, I would say, if you have all those different Bitcoin and Ethereum getting liquidated and just sold on the uh, on the open market, because they're not like MicroStrategy. They don't have to keep the price down. It's like, you know what, just sell it, get rid of it, and then off they go. I mean, they may have, but I don't, I don't think that would be the case. So if they did do that, which it sounds like they did, then uh, that could have been uh, part of the reason for a little bit of price fluctuation. And this, this has been going on for a while. This has not just happened like last week, so just so everybody knows. But I think it's an interesting development. And to me, it really doesn't matter if they did sell it or they did keep it. Uh, whatever it means, it means that that Bitcoin Ethereum is either locked away uh, in some place and probably not going to be sold, or it got sold to you know the highest bidder and is in the hands of potentially somebody else, whales or whatnot. And hopefully it gets locked up in that situation. But for what we see right now for the price action, I mean, we've had a little bit of an increase uh, these last couple of days, but I don't think it's going to last. I think we're going to see some some more dips. And for me, again, dollar cost averager, these are great days. These are the days I live for. I'll be increasing my positions. I buy you know crypto every single day. So uh, great. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.